Welcome back to some new malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called 9 to 5. I work on a case with people from many different areas. Most of the people on the case work in a time zone that's 3 hours ahead of mine. This means that I am often on meetings or depositions that start at around 7 am or earlier. A couple of weeks ago, I attended several days of a deposition, starting at 5.30, for me, each day. On those days, I left the office at around 3. My manager then called me into her office and demanded to know why I was leaving early every day. I told her about the situation, but she did not care. She said, this is a 9 to 5 job. It doesn't matter if you are in earlier, you leave at 5. Otherwise, people will think it's okay to come in and leave whenever they want. Well, 9 to 5 it is. I started arriving at the office promptly at 9. This unfortunately led to me skipping several meetings. But alas, it cannot be helped. One meeting I skipped, scheduled for 6am, is an important bi-weekly one that my manager is also supposed to attend. She has never attended and always relies on me preparing her a report on the meeting, so she can present it to her boss. When she asked for the report, I informed her that I was unable to attend the meeting, since I work a 9 to 5 job and I don't want to give anyone the wrong impression. No report. Sorry. As I left promptly at 5, I peeked through the window to her office and got a great view of her trying to explain herself to her boss. Today she called me and dejectedly informed me that I can leave the office whenever I want from now on. The next story is called Ask for Money. This happened when personal CD players were popular. I have this cousin. Every time you give her a gift for her birthday or Christmas, she complains about wanting money and not the gift. Months before Christmas, I found CD players in different colors and jeans CD cases with gems on them. It was cute. All the kids and teens loved them. The cousin complained because all she got was a Christmas card with money in it. She apparently wanted a CD player too. I said, you always complain about wanting money and not a gift. She spent the entire time mad because she got what she asked for. The third story is called, you play beautifully. When I was young, I found myself married in Tennessee to a young man whose parents were official members of the Williamson County Republican Club. One day his mother asked if I would be able to play piano for an award show they were having. Why did she ask me? Because I was a flaming red haired tattooed person who had her own little indie rock band in Nashville at the time. Makes sense. I just remember being like, mom, I don't really uh, play piano like that. Oh, you'll be fine. Please do it for me. You just have to play soft stuff while everyone walks in and exits. This was a woman you absolutely could not say no to, so I hesitantly obliged. So basically what I did was I played the same two songs over and over and over for 4 hours with flourish embellishments, carefully chosen songs with hidden messages, Creep by Radiohead and Where's My Mind by the Pixies. No one ever knew and if they did, they never said anything. So I made my mother-in-law happy and managed to maliciously comply smiling and nodding when people pass by, all the while sending my own little childish message of rebellion. The shaman's wife politely said, you play beautifully as she was exiting and man, I just never forget that moment. The next story is called No Late Lunches. I work a field services job where faults are called in and are attended to within a few hours. Lots of driving, very unpredictable workloads would while you are here faults. Some venues can have as many as 300 machines, so it's not uncommon to have 3 to 10 extras mentioned on top of the original issue. Usually we would just fix them and not bother wasting the time having our call raised, processing it through our job system, etc. Two extra minutes unaccounted for is more efficient than two minutes repairing and five minutes processing our job. I got into the habit of picking up enough work at once that I could reasonably expect to run out of work with one to two hours left at the end of my day. 
If anything went wrong, I'd have a buffer to get the work done by the end of the day, even if it meant skipping my lunch break. Typically, I'd be taking my lunch break around 2 to 2.30 pm for half an hour, on a 4 pm finish, if nothing went wrong. I got rebuked for taking lunch too late. Explaining the rationale didn't help. Policy is policy. So now I take one job at a time, instead of taking multiple logical jobs that minimize time spent traveling. I raise a call for every single extra job, even if it's a one minute fix. I down tools and take my lunch break exactly halfway through my shift, no matter what I'm in the middle of. This is likely going to result in venues being unable to trade for 30 minutes or longer in some cases. The end result is that I have no stress on me, because I only ever have one single job behind me. I'll never get caught at the end of the day with work left undone. I waste more time raising new jobs and reducing the actual number of fixes I get done each day, but my stats will look like they've doubled. And of course, my meal breaks are exactly how they ask them to be. I'm happier through the course of my day than I've been in a long time. The fifth story is called Scratching the Walls. I work as a contractor and do mainly work in high-end homes. We were doing work on these people's basement and the lady was very particular about people using her stairs to bring materials because it may scratch the walls. Nothing had happened before she kept saying, you're gonna scratch my walls. She had an elevator to carry materials down. I obliged for bigger stuff and then anything small I would take down the stairs. The only problem was that the elevator was extremely slow, about 30 seconds to go up one story. Her stairs were about 6 feet wide and were open to above, so no real chance of scratching anything. And me and all my guys are very careful in these houses. I met my electricians there in the morning to walk them through what they had to do for the day and then left to check out some other jobs. They were only supposed to pull some wires and put in some plugs. Very simple stuff and should have only taken them an hour to do. I cycled back about 4 hours later to make sure everything was done. When I got there, they were still working. I asked the head electrician why it was taking so long and apparently the lady freaked out when they brought their bags downstairs. I asked the head electrician why it was taking so long and apparently the lady freaked out when they brought their bags downstairs. Still didn't hit any walls. So they all proceeded to take the elevator anytime they had to get something from the truck, anytime they went to the washroom or anytime they had to make a call. I got a good laugh and told him to cut it out and was finished in about 10 minutes after that. Ended up costing the lady 4 times the amount of time, but her walls were perfectly intact. The last story is called Lost and Found. This is from about 10 years ago. Like most public places, our library had a lost and found box located under the desk. People could ask, did you find, but you know how that works. Until as time marches on, we get a new boss. Karen did not like our lost and found setup. Instead, things had to go on a shelf behind the desk so everyone could see everything and maybe remember that they had lost a particular item. This policy lasted maybe a week before we noticed a big problem. As public places tend to do, we attracted our fair share of jerks, including Jim. He came in one morning and upon seeing this new shelf of treasures, immediately claims everything on the shelf is his. That glittery pink onesie? His. That well-used pacifier? His. That one odd glove that had been sitting in the box for months? His. We all knew that it wasn't his and said so. And every time Karen would override us. If he says it's his, it's his. Give it to him. Besides, he's clearing out the stuff, so who cares? Until the almost finest straw. One of our regulars was a mom and her kid. Toddler age. Could walk, but had a stroller just in case. Usually well behaved and always had Mr. Giraffe with him. And one day, Mr. Giraffe somehow got left behind. We immediately called the mom. They hadn't even made it home yet and the kiddo is having a meltdown. She says she's turning the car around and should arrive in about 20 minutes. No worries, we'll take good care of him. Showed kiddo a picture of Mr. G checking out a book. Disaster averted. Or so we thought. Karen decrees that Mr. G be placed on the shelf with everything else. Just in time for Jim to spot it and declare it's his. 
The entire building staff is yelling that it is not his. Mom is on her way to get it, etc. But Karen will not be moved. She hands it over anyway, because he says it's his. Sure enough, the mom comes. And no Mr. G. But we know where he is. Someone gets Karen out of her office and as a group we head straight for Jim. Demand he return the giraffe and of course he has no clue what we are talking about. Strange thing about kids sometimes. They see closer to the ground. And sure enough, Mr. G is poking out of Jim's backpack. Kiddo grabs it with a shout of joy and all Karen can do is stammer. But, but, he said it was his. While the rest of us are saying, we told you it wasn't. Now you would think we are done, but we haven't gotten to the malicious compliance yet. Shortly after the giraffe incident, Karen and Jim are still playing their games. Karen heads to our conference and leaves behind a very distinctive, very expensive looking water cooler, which Jim immediately claims is his. I swear he was almost hopping with glee at his latest find. A week later, Karen returns, only to find that Jim has her cooler. She tries to confront him. But all I have to do is say it's mine and they have to give it to me. That's the rule. We finally got our box beneath the desk that afternoon and Jim had to describe anything he was going to try making a claim on. Thanks for watching the video to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. And now I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye-bye.